speak in the Bible about the Holy Spirit. We all know that the Holy Spirit is very important for our salvation. So today, let us see what uh, uh, is the Holy Spirit uh, in the Bible. Because uh, we see in the Bible that uh, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus himself is greater, you know, how can uh, he be anointed with the Holy Spirit? Because he himself uh, was our saviour. You see, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit was given to him without measure. Then how, then why did, uh, you see, uh, Jesus uh, was anointed with the Holy Spirit? Uh, so we will uh, try to, you see, uh, understand from the scriptures so what is the meaning of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and moreover, Jesus also said in uh, Matthew 12 chapter, verse uh, 32, saying that any sin, if you commit, it will be forgiven. But if any man commit a sin against the Holy Spirit, he shall never be forgiven. Uh, let us read that verse. So, Matthew 12, 32. Uh, can somebody read? Okay, Matthew 12, 32. Mm. And whosoever speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Okay. So anything if uh, a man commits a sin against the Holy Spirit, he shall never be forgiven it himself. Then who is greater? If this verse is clearly understood, it says that the Holy Spirit is more powerful than Jesus. <clears throat> if you commit a sin against Jesus also, even that shall be forgiven it himself. But uh, anything against... Uh, you see, Holy Spirit, uh, it shall never be forgiven it himself. Then uh, who is greater? You see, Jesus or the Holy Spirit. You see, and uh, we see that uh, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit. Then that does it mean that Jesus did not have any power? That he had to get any, some power from the Holy Spirit or he was filled with that one? So what does uh, the Holy Spirit actually mean in the Bible? You see, uh, in uh, Acts of the Apostles, uh, there is one verse uh, about the uh, way the Holy Spirit came upon the church. You see? So let us read that one and see what uh, the Holy Spirit is. Acts 2, 3. Acts 2, 3. Uh, Peter, brother, you are there. Can you read? Is it possible for you to read? Okay. Emmanuel, brother, can you read, brother? Acts 2nd chapter, 3rd verse. Okay. Acts 2nd chapter, verse 3. There appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. Very good. See, it sat upon each of them like a cloven tongues of fire. So, here, uh, you see, it says that the Holy Spirit is fire. A fire came upon everybody and uh, you see, they were anointed with the Holy Spirit. So, uh, is Holy Spirit a fire? Okay. Now, let us read one more verse. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 22. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read? I think brother Peter uh, I, I is not able to read. So if you can read the verses, it will be very kind. And when he, is, he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Yes, very good. So receive you the Holy Ghost. Uh, you see, he breathed uh, unto them. So is the Holy Spirit a uh, breath. Uh, you see. Uh, Jesus uh, said, no, he breathed and the Holy Spirit came up. And so that means the uh, Holy Spirit is breathed. Okay. Let us read one more verse uh, where Jesus says, John 6.63. John 6.63. It is the Spirit that quicket. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Ah, you see, here Jesus says, the words which I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are life. That means what? Uh, is the words the Holy Spirit? Okay. Let us read one more verse. John 7 chapter, verse 38 and 39. 
John 7, 38 and 39. Mm -hmm. He that believed on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. You see, here it says, uh, uh, out of their belly, you see, uh, rivers of living water shall flow. And Jesus actually mentioned about this uh, Holy Spirit. So scripture clearly says that. That means what uh, is the Holy Spirit, uh, a living water. Is living water a Holy Spirit? Okay, let us read one more uh, verse uh, in uh, Ephesians 5.18. Ephesians 5th chapter, 18th verse. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Very good. You see? So it says, uh, be not drunk with wine, with excess, but filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now how do we be filled with the Holy Spirit? Because just now we saw that the Holy Spirit is, uh, you see, uh, a dove. You see, Holy Spirit is a fire, Holy Spirit is a water, living water, Holy Spirit is breath, Holy Spirit is words. Now, how do we be filled with the Holy Spirit? Should we be filled with fire? Should we be filled with words? Should we be filled with breath? Or should we be filled with living water? So, what actually is the Holy Spirit? They would have run. So we need to study what actually the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. So in detail, we are going to study verse from Genesis to Revelation. You see what actually the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. So before going to what the Bible says, let us see generally what's the conclusion of the people, what the people think about the Holy Spirit. See generally, the people think, okay, let me ask the question to you. So, what's your opinion, brother? Uh, brother Peter, brother Emmanuel, what's your opinion about the Holy Spirit? What do you think the Holy Spirit is? Uh, Emmanuel, brother? What do you think is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is everything that guides us, that teaches us. Very good. Excellent. Absolutely right. That's the thing that guides us, that helps us. Okay. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, what do you think? Oh, sorry, Peter, brother, what do you think? Peter, brother? Okay, I think he is not able to reply. Okay. Emmanuel, brother, so uh, that's very absolutely rightly said that uh, Holy Spirit is the thing that guides us. Okay. Uh, but is it a person? You see? Is it a person? If you ask that question, you see, the Bible, you see, gives us the answer. So, let us, uh, you see, read that verse as per that. Uh, John 16, 13, brother. You may remember John 16, 13. 16, 13. Mm. How be it, when he, the spirit of the truth is come, he will guide you into into all truth, for he shall, I shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Very good, brother. See, he will show you things to come. When the spirit of truth, he shall come, he will guide you into all truth. So he shall speak of, uh, not of himself, uh, he shall uh, uh, speak whatever he hears. So he, 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 it is clearly mentioned. So, many people, uh, you see, come to a conclusion that the Holy Spirit uh, is a person. You see, Holy Spirit is a person. Uh, you see, many people come to a conclusion. Okay, because why? Because the term He is used here. Okay? Okay, now let us read one verse in Ecclesiastes, first chapter, verse 5. Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter 1, verse 5, brother. Sun also arise, and the sun goeth down, and hasted to his place where he arose. 
you see and he hasted to his place where he arose so here how is the sun you see spoken as the sun is spoken as his place he arose now what does it mean does it mean that uh, sun is a person does it mean that there is a male or female uh, sun you see did you observe brother you mean brother did you observe yeah brother yeah so here the sun is compared to he what does it mean that uh, there is a male sun there is a female sun eh? let us read one more verse uh, galatians you see uh, instead of galatians uh, um okay galatians 426 brother okay read brother galatians 426 galatians 426 hmm. for Jerus jerusalem which is above is far free which is the mother of us all see jerusalem is compared to a mother here now does it mean that jerusalem is a female brother does it mean that Jerusalem is a female or a, is she a woman? Is she a person? Huh? Email, brother, tell me. Is Jerusalem a woman? Not physically a woman, but it's an indication of indicating the woman as a nature Very of good. woman. Very good, brother. Ex absolutely right. Even, you see, uh, Nepal, you see, Nepal uh, is compared to a female or a male. In your Nepal. India is compared to Mother India. Like that one in Nepal, how do you call Nepal as? Father or mother? Yeah, we call it as a mother. Mother. Very good, brother. Absolutely right. Why? Why do they compare, you see, these countries or places to a mother? Because as a mother carries the child in her womb, bears the child. So similarly, this land is bearing all the people. So it is just a comparison for a feminine character. Just because the term she is used, it doesn't mean that Jerusalem is a person. Jerusalem is a female. No. It is just a comparison because all the qualities of a woman is there. That is the reason this feminine comparison is used. Similarly, just now we saw about sun. Now, is there a, a male or a female sun? Is a sun person? No. You see, sun is not a person at all. But there, even then, he son is called as he. Why? Because it is compared to a masculine gender, a male gender. Because, you see, the male has more power, strength, energy compared to the woman. Hence, uh, compared to other creations, son has got more power, energy. Therefore, it is just a comparison. Not a literally, it means uh, it is a person. Okay. Now, uh, let us read 1 Corinthians 13, 5, brother. 1 Corinthians 13, 5, brother. Uh. 1 Corinthians 13, 5. Hmm. Doth not we have behave itself unseemly? Second. Doth, uh, doth not we have itself unseemly? Seek it not her own. Ah. Is not really provoked. Very Think good. Well. Seek it not her own. It is not easily provoked. Seek not her alone, sir, her own. Here you see, love is compared to her. Now, does it mean that uh, love has got male and female? No. Love doesn't have any gender at all. See, it is, a, it is what? It is a feeling. But even then, it is compared to her. Just because it is compared to her, does it mean that love is a person or a personality? No. Then why it is compared to a feminine gender, if you see? Because compared to male, a female have more love. You see, they are very soft character person. You see, compared to father and mother who has more love and affection. It is the mother. 
You see, therefore, this term in the Bible is used for a comparison. Okay. Now, like for example, what is the devil called as? What is the devil compared to? Is he compared to male or female brother? Imagine brother, the devil, the Satan, is he compared to male or female? He is also compared as a male. Very good. John 8.44, it clearly says, you are of your father, the devil. You see, the lust of your father, not mother. Huh? You will do. He was a murderer. He, he, he. What does it mean that uh, Satan has got uh, that bifurcation? A male and female bifurcation? No. Angels don't have that bifurcation at all. Jesus gives clearly reply in the Bible. You see, they shall be like angels, neither marry nor be given in marriage. So, angels doesn't have any bifurcation at all. But why? Here, you see, Satan is compared to he. Because again, it's just a comparison of the character while comparing to, you see, comparatively seeing the differences between a male and a female. Hence, if you see in the Bible, you see, there is a gender usage in the Bible. So, like for example, we studied uh, in uh, school. There are three types of gender. Masculine gender, feminine gender and neutral gender. Okay. Like for example, if you see one boy coming, what will we tell? Oh, he is coming. You see, we don't tell it is coming. It is coming is a, not a, a proper sentence at all. He is coming. Okay. If uh, a girl is coming, now how do we tell? Uh, we would tell that she is coming. We won't tell, oh, he is coming. He means what? A uh, uh, hey, male person. But she means a uh, female person. But similarly, if you see a car that is coming, now how do we tell that one? Uh, we won't tell that, oh, she is coming or he is coming. We would tell it is coming. You see? It means what? It is a neutral gender. You see? So, in English, we have this bifurcation of words to use these terms he, she and it. By usage of these three words, we are clearly able to differentiate you see, about a male, female and a neutral genders. You see, but if you come to Greek, there is no such differentiation at all. There is only one Greek word that is used. That is hot house. You see, for all the three genders, only one common word hot house is used. This is what is mentioned in John 16 chapter. where Wherever, not only John 16 chapter, entire Bible, you see where these words are used. You see, if you go to Greek, you see, Greek doesn't differentiate between male, female and, uh, you see, uh, what do you say, lifeless things. All the genders have the same word that is used as autos. So, while you are translating from the Greek to the English Bible, so how do you translate? Uh, it is based upon uh, your uh, sentence formation that you use those words. Uh, that is what they were done. Like, for example, here the sun is compared to he. Does it mean that it is a, a male? No. It is just a comparison as Lucifer is compared to a male character. While earth is compared and love is compared. While Jerusalem is compared to a female. Because it has got all motherly character and qualities. Similarly, when the Bible says in John 16, 14, that the Holy Spirit, he shall lead you into all truth. It means... Holy Spirit is compared to a person, you see, because it has got uh, that character, not that it is a person itself, it is just a comparison, dear brother, because that Greek word can be used in either way, you see. So, Holy Spirit is not a person, which is just a comparison. How we saw, you see, Holy Spirit is compared to Dow, no, 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 this is Dow Holy Spirit. Huh? Holy Spirit is compared to water. Huh? Does it mean that water is Holy Spirit? Huh? No. Holy Spirit is compared to fire. Is fire Holy Spirit? No. It is compared to words. Is words Holy Spirit? No. It is just a comparison. All these incidents, if you see, this is just a comparison. So here also, if you see, Holy Spirit is not a person at all. 
Okay. Then, if it is not a person, then uh, the Bible says that uh, Jesus called the Holy Spirit as a comforter. Now, why did Jesus call the Holy Spirit as comforter if he is not a person? You see, let us read that verse again in uh, John 14, 16, brother. John 14, 14, 16, brother. Can you read, brother? John 14, 16. Mm -hmm. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. <laughs> See? Comforter. This word comforter actually comes only four times in the Bible. That to where only in the Gospel of John from chapter 14 to chapter 16. Only four times it comes in the Bible. Now, if the Holy Spirit is a person, if it is really a comforter, if it is a person, you see, why Jesus would use this term only four times in the Bible? Why did not, uh, you see, uh, apostles or any person used it, uh, these words, uh, you see, dear brethren? Why? Actually, what happened here? You see, that word comforter actually means, uh, you see, huh? to help, uh, to assist uh, or to guide. You told me initially, brother, that which guides us, that which helps us, the same meaning is actually used here. You see, and why did Jesus use these words here? We need to understand, no? See, if you, if you, if you use these terms to anybody, oh, don't worry, he'll guide you, he'll help you. That means what? That means there must be a problem. To guide them, to strengthen them in the problem, you're speaking those words. It was the same way with Jesus. You see, Jesus actually spoke these words at last moment, when he was supposed to die, just a few, few, few moments before, he had the last meal with his disciples. You see? And uh, that is the time that uh, Jesus, in a very sad, uh, you see, in a mood, he tells uh, that, uh, I will go and die on the cross. And you should all be scattered. Uh, and you will all leave me and go. And immediately, you know, Peter, uh, he was always very fast in reacting. He immediately tells, Oh, Master, I will never leave you. Though everybody rejects you, I will never reject you. I will be with you till your death. I will go even to prison with you. You see, then uh, immediately, you know, what did Jesus say? What did Jesus said, brother? What did Jesus reply to Peter, brother? Imagine, brother, what did Jesus reply? Imagine, brother, what was the reply of Jesus to these words of Peter? Peter said, no, I would never reject you. I will come with you to jail also. Jesus said that the cock will not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Very good, brother. Excellently. See, it was like a rebuking Peter in front of everybody. What? You will not reject me. Yeah? Oh, you forget Peter. Before the cock crows, you shall deny me how many times? Three times. Imagine Jesus told this one before everybody. Everybody turned pale. You see, everybody turned sad. You see, they were all completely let down. That is what the Bible says. Now read John 14, 1 brother. What you said is given in John 13, chapter 37, 38. So as you all know, we are not going to read that one. Now let us read. John 14, 1. See, this narration is a continuous incident. The Bible originally, when it was printed, it doesn't have any Bible uh, chapters or verse division. So, it is a continuous thing. So, read John 14, 1. What happened? Huh. John 14, 1. Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Uh -huh. Now, why did Jesus say uh, to the disciples, let not your heart be troubled? Why did uh, Jesus use these words? See, as soon as he mentioned to Peter, you shall deny me three times, you know what happened? Everybody's face turned pale. What is this? Jesus uh, is rebuking Peter like this in front of everybody. What is wrong in that he said that he will uh, die with him? Nothing wrong. Instead of encouraging him, Jesus is completely in front of everybody rebuking him. Then uh, the faces were all let down. So Jesus saw their faces and encouraged them. Let not you be heart be troubled. 
Don't be troubled. You see, have faith. You believe in God, no? Similarly, believe in me also. That is why he is encouraging the disciples. You see, now why Jesus used all these things? Because we all know the disciples were fishers. They left all this, uh, you see, worldly uh, business and came behind Jesus. Correct, right, brother? They forsook all everything and came behind Jesus. Why did they come behind Jesus? What was the benefit? Why did they leave all these things and come behind Jesus? Imagine, brother. Any idea? Why did they come behind Jesus, leaving all these things? To make the fisherman of the men. Very the good. Souls. Then, did they have uh, only this thought or any other thought they had? Eh? Let us read one scripture in the Bible. You see, Matthew 19.28 Buddha. Matthew 19.28 hmm. Matthew 19.28 And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that he who is have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of the Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Ah, so Jesus promised, so you're going to sit with me on twelve thrones. I'm going to be seated in the center, that side, six, this side, six throne will be there. So you'll all be sitting on the throne. Now imagine what they thought. Literally, they thought that Jesus is going to be the king. They're going to defeat the Romans. They can de sit on the left hand and right hand of Jesus. Literally, they thought like this only. And they can be the cabinet ministers. Now, how do we know this one? You know, I remember the mother of uh, James and John. You see, she came and asked Jesus, Master, please give my two sons to sit on the Right hand, left hand, correct, no? Let us read the verse, brother. Matthew 20, 21, brother. Huh? Matthew 20, 21. Hmm. And he said unto her, What will thou? She said unto him, Grant that, grant that these my two sons may sit, the, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. In thy kingdom. That's what Jesus has said in 19th chapter. You shall sit on 12 thrones, kings. So immediately next day, you see, her mother came and approached Jesus, asking, Master, please give permission to my two sons to sit very close to you. That means important minister seat, you give it to my two sons. Because they literally thought that Jesus is going to destroy the Romans and establish his kingdom. Therefore, you know, when Jesus was going to heaven, even at that moment, disciples asked the same question. Read, brother. Acts 1, 6, brother. Acts of the Apostles, first chapter 6, verse, brother. Acts 1, 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Ah, you see, at least now, shall you restore the kingdom back to? Israel kingdom, destroy the Roman kingdom, restore your kingdom, at least make us to sit on the 12th row. But nothing such a thing happened, dear brethren. Jesus is telling, I must die. If Jesus is dead, so where will they get, get the opportunity to sit on the throne? By destroying the Romans. Therefore, they were totally discouraged. They left everything and had been following Jesus. You see, and... Jesus saw their face and started to encourage them. How did he encourage them? Now we read John 14, 1. Now read John 14, 2, brother. Huh? John 14, 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Ah, then he tells, don't worry. I am going to my father's place. You see? If I go, I will prepare a place for you and come and take you back. In my father's house, what is there? Many mansions. Many mansions means what? Many palaces are there. If I go, I will prepare a place for you and then I will come and take you back. 
Then read the continue. Read verse three also. Hmm. Verse three. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Ah, then he said, ah, you may be with me. I will come and receive you. So, this is how Jesus has promised that you are going to sit with me on my throne. Okay. And uh, he told, don't worry. If I go, I won't leave you alone. I will send the Holy Spirit to comfort you. He said, don't worry. I will uh, not leave you permanently. But the Holy Spirit will come and what? Uh, he will comfort you. That is what Jesus used this term. Okay. That is what is given in John 14, 16. We just now read. Okay. After mentioning this one, you see, Jesus mentions one thing in John 15, 1. Read with us. John 15, 1. Huh? John 15, 1. Hmm. I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Hmm. I am the true vine. Now, Jesus is what? Jesus is the wine. Which uh, plant? Wine of which plant? Wine means which plant? Which fruit? It's grapes. Grapes. So Jesus is saying, I am the vine. You are the branches. Now Jesus is the vine. Jesus is literally grape vine. No. Right now it's just a comparison. You see, Jesus was giving a comparison at how a farmer, you see, tends and trends, you see, and more. You see, trims, uh, you see, the grapevine, similarly, my father. You see, now, after telling all these things, uh, read John 16, 25. At last, what did Jesus say? John 16, 25 was that? These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the father. Ah, so all these things Jesus said. See, you read when you're free. John 14 chapter, Jesus begins to converse, uh, discuss with the disciples. From John 13 chapter. He ends the entire thing in John 17 chapter. So all these things what Jesus said was actually the words of encouragement to the disciples. John 16 chapter ends there. And John 17 chapter is the prayer of Jesus. So here it clearly says that Jesus spoke all these things to them in Proverbs. That means Jesus never directly spoke to them. That means when Jesus said, I am the vine, he never literally meant that I am the little vine. So when he said that I am going to send a comforter, he really did not mean that I am going to send a literal person who is going to replace me. You see, he was just using those words to comfort the disciples. You see, to pacify them. Like for example, imagine uh, children. You see, uh, do you have children? Do you have any kids in your house? Yeah, we have. Okay. So how did they go to the school on the first day of the school? First day of experience of to go to the school. Will they go happily without any hesitation? No, because they will deny. Yes, they'll start sure. crying. They don't know at all. First of all, what is school? They will tell mommy, you also come. Then mommy, papa will go. They will stay in the door. Then they will go one step, then come running back. They will tell mommy, you also come. When mama, papa will tell, no, no, you go here. I'll be here only. I'll go get chocolate. Don't worry. I'm here only. I'll be with you. Don't worry. Here only I'm there. Don't worry. See, I can see you from the window. Go just sit there. Two minutes, I'll bring uh, some... Uh, chocolate and toffees and cakes to you. This is what they use those terms. You see? Why? To comfort them. You see? Similarly, the disciples had never received the Holy Spirit. So they could not understand that the kingdom is in a future thing. It is only after that the death that they are going to sit with Jesus on the throne. So they all thought that these things are going to happen literally in this earth. So to comfort them, Jesus said, I will not leave you alone. I will send the Holy Spirit. And that doesn't mean that Jesus will send a person. You see, it is through the Holy Spirit 
that Jesus is uh, guiding the church. You told me initially, brother, the same answer Jesus says. See, Matthew 28, 20, brother. Huh? Twenty-eight, twenty. Hmm. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Hmm. I am with you always, hmm. even unto the end of the world. Really? I mean, even unto the end of the world. See, how is Jesus with us with the end of the world? Literally, physically, personally? No. You see, but he, we can feel him. We can see his guidance. That is the invisible power through which Jesus is there with us. This is actually the Holy Spirit. So, Jesus is compared to light, word, bread, wine. These are all not related comparisons. We need to take the Bible and study. So, by studying the Bible, we clearly understand that the Hebrew word that is used for the word spirit is actually ruwa, which means power, a invisible power. And in Greek, the word is used as pneuma, you see, that also means actually invisible power. Remember the soul subject? God created Adam from the breath of, or from the dust of his ground, breath of his life, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So that breath of life is actually an invisible, you see, power which God gave to Adam because of which he lived. So similarly, see, all these verses clearly show that the Holy Spirit is an invisible power. So let us read uh, these verses one by one, brother. Uh, John 4.24, brother. Huh? John 4.24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and in the truth. See, God is a spirit means what? Huh? He is invisible. You see, we can't see God. You see, God is invisible now. But yet he is powerful. He is not idle. He is invisible. Yet he is powerful. He can be Felt everywhere. That is the invisible power. Therefore, Jesus said, God is the spirit. He is not everywhere. You see, a particular place and all. He is everywhere. He is invisible. That is the meaning of the word spirit in the Bible. And read John 6.63 also, brother. John 6.63. Hmm. It is the spirit that quickened the flesh. He profited nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Ah, you see, the words which I speak, they are spirit. The words which I speak, they are spirit. Uh -huh, that means what? Uh, the words. Uh, can we see the words? Jesus spoke so many words. Uh, could somebody see the words? No, you see, now I am speaking. Can you see my words? You can hear it. You can feel it. But you can't see it. It is invisible. That is the meaning of the word spirit. You see? Now read 1 Timothy 1 7, brother. 2 Timothy 1 7. Sorry. 2 Timothy 1 7. 2 Timothy 1 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. See? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power. Spirit of power. That is the Holy Spirit, brother. The spirit of power. Of love and sound mind. Mind, can we see in mind? You see, that is invisible. That's a feeling, sir. See, read next verse. Acts 19.21 is given there. Huh? Okay, Acts 19.21. After these things were ended, Paul proposed in the spirit huh? when he had... You see, Paul purposed in the spirit. That means he decided in the spirit where to go. What does it mean? You see, that means... He decided in his mind. Mind or feelings. Can we read and see feelings? No. That is invisible, dear brethren. You see, that is the meaning of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. You see, let us read uh, You see a few more verses. Uh, uh, Genesis uh, 45, 27, brother. Uh. Genesis 45, 27. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons with Joseph, had sent to carry him, the spirit of the Jacob, their father, revived. See? The spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Spirit revived in one, sir. You see? You see? That uh, power it was very sad and completely let down when he heard that Joseph is dead. But when he came to know that Joseph is really alive, his spirit revived. He strengthened himself. He received that vigor, energy. 
that is invisible. Read John 3, 8, brother, also. John 3, 8. John 3, 8. The wind bloweth where it's listed, listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. See? Everyone that is born of the Spirit, they can't see. See? It is the invisible. That's what he says. The wind bloweth wherever it uh, you see, blow. You can hear the sound, but you cannot see from whence it came and whence it went. It is invisible. Similarly, that is God's Holy Spirit. It is invisible yet powerful. Remember, you see, Eli Elijah and Elisha. You have heard the story, no brother? Elijah was taken up and uh, he was given the spirit of uh, Elijah. You see, what happened to Elisha? He did twice the work of Elia. You see, now there, you see, the Bible says the spirit of God rested upon Elisha. You see, uh, let us uh, uh, read the verse. Second Kings, second chapter, 15th verse. Second Kings, second chapter, 15th verse, brother. Second Kings, second chapter, verse 15. Yeah. And when the sons of the prophet which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of the Elijah doth rest on Elisha. Mm -hmm. And they you came see, to meet. You see, the spirit of uh, Eli Elijah rests upon Elisha. What does it mean? You see, uh, one God came and said, uh, uh, Elisha, or the Eli Elia. Uh, you see, uh, came inside Elisha. No, dear brethren, that was the power of Elisha. Whatever uh, work that Elisha did, uh, the same power, the same spirit, uh, the same mind uh, was there in Elisha also. Where is it given? Luke first chapter 16 and 17 is given there. Read Luke first chapter 16 and 17. Luke first chapter verse sixteen and seventeen, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn into the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Mm, you see, uh, he shall go in the spirit and power of uh, Elijah. Huh? Read, uh, continue, brother. Continue, that verse, uh, 18 verse. 18 verse. And Zacharias said unto the angels, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my okay, wife... Okay. One minute, one minute, brother. One minute. I will show you. Look, first chapter. Seventeenth verse, brother. I read from the Bible. Yes, 17 verse. And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias. Ah, you see? He shall go before him in the spirit and power. Spirit and power of huh? Elijah. Elijah went with the spirit and power of Elijah. That is the meaning of Holy Spirit in the Bible. See, also, we also read, no? man was given the breath of life. That is also the word of same Holy Spirit, the spirit only. You see, man was created uh, a body and spirit, the breath of life was given. We already seen that one. That is an invisible power which no man can see. It was the same spirit, you see, God had given to Samson. You see, you know Samson, no? Samson was a very mighty man. When the Philistines came to arrest him, you see, his power came immediately and he crushed the Philistines. He, he destroyed everybody. See, see what happened. Judges 15 chapter, brother. 14 and 15, brother. Judges 15 chapter, 14 and 15, brother. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came might, mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burned with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands. 
and he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and he... took it mm. Mm. and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. He killed thousand people. Why? When the Spirit of God came mightily, the power when it came upon him. Doesn't mean that God came and entered him. God went away. God used to come and go. No, no, no. The power of God. God had given him that power where he took the job on of an ass and killed thousand people. Even today, even if you give 8 to 47, you can't kill thousand people at a time. But imagine he killed thousand people at that time means it's God's power. Remember, God had given the same Holy Spirit to whom? The kings, the prophets, the priest. You see? The, even King Saul was given the same spirit. What happened? When God's Holy Spirit was there, it was good. But once when the God Holy Spirit left, the evil spirit came and tortured him. So here also, you see, not that something here, you see, came inside him. It was the invisible power of God. You see, and uh, during the day of Pentecost, what happened? God's Holy Spirit came upon how many people? 3,000 people now. First it came upon uh, 12 apostles, then upon 3,000 people. Huh? Does the God came and entered upon all the 3,000 people? Huh? Oh, God entered 1%, 2%, 3%. No, no, no. God's power. You see, they were filled with God's power. Therefore, the Bible says, now you are the temple of the living God. We are the temple where God's Holy Spirit dwelt within us. You see, so it is the same Holy Spirit that guided the prophets in the Old Testament. You see, Read with us. 2 Peter 1.21, brother. 2 Peter 1.21. 2 Peter 1.21. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You see, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That means what moved by the Holy Ghost. Means. As God's power used them, moved them, they spoke like this. So hence, you see, Holy Spirit is actually invisible power. Therefore, you see, we see in the Bible that Jesus was surrounded with what? Let us read that was clearly it's given there. Acts 10, 38. Brother. Acts 10, 38. Uh. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power mm. who went about doing good and mm. healing all that were Operation of the devil, for God was with him. Ah, you see, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. You see, it is the power. You see, Holy Ghost was the power that God anointed Jesus. Hence, it went and did miracles in all the things. So Jesus himself mentions that one. You know where? Luke twenty four forty nine. Brother, read brother. Luke twenty four forty nine. Luke twenty four forty nine. Mm. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, mm. but tarry ye in the city of the Jerusalem until ye be endued with the power from on high. Ah, you be in Jerusalem only till I send the power from heaven. That power is the power of Holy Spirit. Therefore, you say how how Jesus was anointed with God's Holy Spirit. John three thirty four, Buddha. Read John three thirty four. John 3, 34. Mm. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of the God, for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. Mm. You see, God doesn't give the spirit by measure. How can a person be measured? Can a person be measured? No. But power can be measured. Hence, God had given him the Holy Spirit without measure. Unlimited power God had given you see, to God's children. Uh -huh. Therefore, that is the meaning of Holy Spirit in the Bible. Therefore, you see, in the Bible it says, quench not the Holy Spirit. Be you filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, uh -huh. what does it mean? See, God has given us His power. We should never, you see, quench it. It is the like a light that is burning. Day by day, what should happen? Our power should, you see, increase. That means, uh, we should be you know, more and more studying the word of God. And hence we will be filled more of God's mind. You see. Therefore in the Bible. You know. Uh, uh, Holy Spirit is mentioned in different names. Uh, Spirit of God. Spirit of sound mind. Spirit of Christ. Spirit of truth. 
spirit of wisdom, spirit of counsel, understanding, spirit of grace. It doesn't mean that there are so many gods, uh, dear brethren. It all signifies the one powerful Holy Spirit uh, which does different types of, uh, you see, work within us. To some people it gives counsel, to some people it gives understanding, wisdom. That's what it means. Uh, and uh, Bible also speaks about evil spirit. Uh, the spirit of fear, spirit of words, spirit of error, spirit of antichrist, uh, spirit of slumber. Does it mean there are so many gods? Uh? No, no, no. It is not God at all, but it is God's power. You see, therefore, this one has to be clearly understood. Now, what is the doctrine of Christ? Let us read. Second uh, John, verse 9, brother. Second John, verse 9. Second John, verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abide not in the doctrine of the Christ, hath not God. He that abide in the doctrine of the Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Aha, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ. He hath both the Father and the Son. Where the Holy Spirit is missing? Because the Holy Spirit is not a person. It is the power of God. You see, therefore Jesus, when he gave witness, he said, I and myself bear witness. He doesn't give the witness of the Holy Spirit at all. Read John 8, 18. John 8, 18. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. You see, the Father that sent me bear witness of me. So, Holy Spirit, uh, you see, is just uh, the power of God. Uh, you see, so it is not a person. So, uh, here is the subject of the Holy Spirit. So, next week, uh, we will continue with the uh, other class. Uh, Imani brother, you are clear? You have any doubts, any questions about Holy Spirit? So, if the Holy Spirit is not a person that we can, can we, uh, how can we measure that? How can we say about the uh, the behaviors or the that we have done or the, the people in the past have done to the Holy Spirit, like they have made them the Holy Spirit sad? These kind of things are mentioned in the uh, Ephesians 4.30. Hmm. Read Ephesians 4.30. Ephesians 4.30. Hmm. It's mentioned that, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of God, with hmm. whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Ah, do not grieve. You see, do not grieve me what? The Bible also says in Ephesians, uh, you see, be you filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, that means, can we fill, can we be filled with the person, brother? Can we be filled with the person? Of course not. Uh, but uh, we can be filled more and more of God's power with us. Uh, see, as we keep on understanding more and more of God's words, and as we keep on obeying more and more of God's words, uh, that holy mind. Uh, comes more and more to us. You see, that is the way, the way that God is strengthening us and being guiding us and helping us, you see, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But if we don't walk as per the guidance of the Holy Spirit, which God gives us daily through His words, therefore Jesus said, the words which I speak, they are spirit unto you. It is like what? It is like grieving the Holy Spirit. It is like walking against the will of God. You see, See, in Acts of the Apostles, once what happened is that, that uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they sold uh, all the property and they came and uh, dedicated uh, the money in front of Peter. But instead of dedicating the complete thing, they withhold uh, some of the portion and they came and sold, uh, you see, and uh, something they, with, uh, they kept it for self. And rest of the thing, they came and... Uh, uh, placed before the Apostle Peter. P Peter asked, uh, uh, how do you sin against the Holy Spirit? How do you tell lies against the Holy Spirit? How did they tell lies against the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit was in Peter. So anybody not walking as per it uh, was actually lying to the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus said. Any sin you do, it will be forgiven. But if a sin you do against the Holy Spirit, that is actually the power of God, you see, you shall never be forgiven. 
That's what actually the Bible means, sir. So see, clear, brother? Yes, sir. Okay. You still have any doubts, sir? No, brother. If I then I will let you know. Okay. Please study the PDF. We'll be sending the PDF. Okay. See, we should not come to a conclusion based on one verse. Correct, no, brother? Yeah, brother. Because we have been that uh, uh, the yeah previously we have been studying that the. Uh, in the chapter of new meteorology that uh, while studying about the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost can be compared as a person because it has the, the feeling of the person that with, uh, with the person, because it has wisdom, that is the feelings, and that teaches. So uh, the different in the scenarios there, we have seen that uh, we have made them sad. Also in the case of the Hanani and Safira also there, and the Hebrew 10, 29 also, that uh, they are ignoring uh, the Holy Spirit, this kind of thing. So, so what all you just now mentioned, uh, just think, uh, don't you think that all these things are feelings? Don't, don't you think that all these things are uh, things which are can't be seen from our eyes? Yeah, these are the feelings, but... Uh, the, then how can be a person? Can be See, person, the, yeah. person should be clearly visible. That's what Jesus said in John 3rd chapter. A person who is born of the Spirit, how shall he be? He shall be like a wind. He can't see him. See, Bible clearly says God is a Spirit. That means that God is visible. Is God visible? No. God is not at all visible. Jesus clearly said, the words which I speak unto you, they are Spirit. Does it mean that it's a person? No. You see, it is invisible. Something which is invisible. See, I'll give you an example. Read 1 Corinthians, brother. 1 Corinthians, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. See, Apostle Paul mentions that one. 1 Corinthians, 2nd chapter. 2nd chapter, 10th verse. 1 Corinthians, 2nd chapter, verse 10. Hmm. These, are, these are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Okay, now here, Apostle Paul is telling, God has revealed the deep things of the Bible. You see, how? How is God revealed? Through God's Holy Spirit. Now, how did God reveal us through His Holy Spirit? Sir? He gives us an explanation. He gives us a small example. What is that example? Read verse 11. Hmm. For who knows a person's thoughts accept their own spirit within them? Ah, wait. Now, you explain to me what is the meaning of this one. Who knows a person's thought except a spirit within himself? So what does it mean? What do you think it means? Who knows a person's thought except, you see, except himself? I'll tell you, what does it mean? I'll give you an example. Now, who can understand your thoughts, brother? Only me and God. Very good, brother. Only you can understand your thoughts. Absolutely correct. But there are uh, a people, if, if there is a very good friend or very best friend of you, you can definitely understand some of your thoughts to a certain extent, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, to a certain, like for example, I give you an example. Imagine if you're very sad, you see, and if you go to your workplace, if you if you meet your best friend, immediately if it's really a genuine best friend, you can you have that uh, uh, very closeness to you, he will definitely ask you why you're so sad today. Correct now? Have you yeah. ever met this such incident? Yes. So how does he understand your feelings? Sir? It is based upon our, you see expression, our, our our way of reacting, all these things. So, how is he able to read our mind? You see, that is the way this scripture is saying. Who can understand other person's mind? Nobody can understand. You see, only that person can understand his own mind or God should reveal it to that person. It is the same way with God's Holy Spirit. We can't understand God's mind, the deep things of God. God has to reveal it. You see, what is there in his mind to his God's children? How? Through his words. 
one person who understand deep things of the bible he only can understand the mind of god and that god gives us through his spirit read that verse continuous brother continue continue reading that verse is given there only ha huh? if for who knows a person's thought accept their own spirit within them in the same way we no one knows the thoughts of god accept the spirit of god aha thoughts of god why is given thoughts of god is going to give a personality of god person of god you see a god himself thoughts of god why because the thoughts of god is completely written in the word of god brother as you understand more and more about thoughts of god that is given in the bible then only we can have that closeness of god then only we will be filled with the holy spirit see this one it doesn't come by magic god has to give that you see that grace that power unto us this is what jesus was given he was anointed with the holy spirit do you think a person came and entered inside him no no person came inside him god's understanding god's power came to him then he realized so many things 40 days what did he do in the wilderness you see he meditated upon god's words this is what samson received this is what bezalel received so many things this is what david was given this is what god had given to king saul when he was deeply disobedient what happened you see god's spirit went up from him you see and in the creation you see god's spirit was there god commanded everything happened this is god's power you see jesus said no look 24 49 stay here in jerusalem until i send the power from high he did not say until i send a person from high we stay here no 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 if that was the case why why is it necessary that jesus should come back again jesus said i will be with you how it is through his spirit that is with us till the end of the world okay brother okay brother thank you if i will go through the pdf for any confusions i will let you know later please please brother, please go through the notes sir. any questions any doubts you can definitely ask ashish brother is also there he will also guide you in nepali language okay Excuse ashish me, brother brother ah, uh, you like brother peter even brother peter might have some doubts okay peter brother peter ke sir is not answering any questions peter brother no reply oh, okay no thanks no thanks okay 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 you would you like to add anything ashish brother <laughs> they definitely they definitely have lot of lot of questions and doubts regarding whenever we say that holy spirit is not a person but is a power it is a power so there are a lot of uh, other verses as well as we have not covered so uh, probably we have uh, covered all the explanation of those verses remaining verses in pdf so please go through pdf uh, slowly and thoroughly so if you have any doubt we can discuss next week okay good brother okay we thank for your question we thank for your question especially brother ima uh, because there's a genuine question yes very good and, we appreciate those uh, questions question to, yeah yeah we appreciate uh, imal brother that you opened up and you brought forth your questions uh, we really appreciate it uh, but uh, we will uh, you say reason out from the scriptures thank you imal brother can you offer a prayer we'll close with a word of prayer let's pray father we thank you again for this wonderful evening and the blessed evening for, uh, and helping us learn from the scripture and thank you for brother raju for teaching us and making us the clear uh, clarity about the holy spirit and Uh, we pray for everyone to have your uh, wisdom on us and to know much more deeper in you and thank you for the holy spirit that has been given to us that has been leading us that has been guiding us to live a perfect life as you has shown us uh, we pray for everyone and we ask for blessing for everyone we pray in jesus name amen 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 thank you good night god amen. bless thank you good night brother bye bye good night bye